Now, live from Artie's Cut-Rate Liquor Store, Shooting Range, Candle Shop, Bowling Alley, Massage Parlor, it's the Dave and Doc Podcast. Hello, hello. Happy night, happy night. Inter- yeah, interview coming up with some, interview some coming awesome up. might. Yeah, we'll talk. Uh, we'll talk to Brian Tui. I'm excited. Coming up, uh, wrote a book called "The Fix Is In," talking about uh, gambling and how most professional sports, if not all of them, are prearranged, scripted, scripted. The, WWE. The, out, the outcome. The outcome is determined. Wow. And and again, you know, I think, and we'll get into that. The the gambling versus the just the the revenue stream. You know, not so yeah. much like gambling mafia type stuff and, and, and you know i think hopefully he, he'll get into some of that and talk about that that'll be interesting to see we'll but I'm, see. I'm excited you know and and, and super awesome of him to yeah um <clears throat> meet with us because i mean you know this this guy's been on several different podcasts i mean he's been on the dan patrick show yeah um so just just really thankful for and that. folks i heard a rumor time. i heard a rumor that he hates espn oh um <laughs> that'll be at least a good five to seven minutes of the interview just uh, talking about that. I mean, because nobody, nobody, ain't nobody like a Dave Man body who likes to get on some ESPN. Oh yeah, beat down <clears throat> episode sixty three, folks of the Dave and Doc podcast. I'm Dave and I'm Doc. All things Dave and Doc on our website at daveanddoc.com. That's Dave right. A and D Doc D O C dot com. Episode sixty three, sixty three. I think is how old I will be when my youngest graduates high school. As a matter of fact, that's awesome. Is it? That's awesome. Is it? Rocket. Rocket. I'm, I'm uh, with my with my blood pressure at 199 over 199. I feel like there's something wrong there. That's an invalid test. <laughs> I'm just saying. Either I'm invalid or that's an invalid test. Yeah. <laughs> Your battery's low. That's that's the been true for low. That's been true for a long the time. Bat- it's okay. You just gotta keep going. Yep. Oh well. Uh, welcome to the show, folks. Again, like Brian Tui's coming up. Uh, we'll have that interview with him. And uh, uh, as always, we start the show with... We got some dad jokes. Some dad jokes. Some dad jokes. Now, now the, this was kind of hard because I didn't really know, you know, the, theme-wise, I mean, the, the fix is in. I mean, what a what a great name for the book. Um, yeah. But, but I couldn't... So I kind of did some... So we kind of got some gambling. I got, got a gambling joke or two. Um, so I thought we could kind of do that. And, sure. And, you know, just see... Just see kind of kind of where it goes. We, there, there's not as many, um, but but I thought we could have a couple and and just see. So, all right. So that doesn't make sense. I don't like that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually funny. But there you go. You'll get. You'll, I'll give you one for that. It's like now ah, they suck. Screw it. <laughs> so. My wife left me because I'm a compulsive gambler. Mm-hmm. I didn't do anything to win her back. Oh, no. <laughs> got to chase it, man. You got to chase it. <laughs> My wife challenged me to a game of strip poker. Yeah. But then I realized she just wanted to do the laundry. Oh. <laughs> so, I, so I folded. <laughs> you folded. Premature. You, <laughs> a little premature. <laughs> a little premature. <laughs> Blew it a little early. Just a little early. It's okay. There you go. Um. <laughs> Why are large maps rubbish at playing poker? This is obviously a British joke. Why are large maps rubbish at playing poker? Why? They always fold. That's terrible. Hello. That's freaking terrible. Hello, Gavin. <laughs> so this will be the last one. So, hey, Roy. I was at the track and asked a guy for a tip. He asked me how long my pecker was. I told him eight inches. He said to bet on the eight horse. <laughs> well, it turned out the three horse won the race. Damn. I knew I shouldn't have lied. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. There was a, there was a time, <laughs> and there. So this brings on a story. There, there was, was a, this time in no, West Memphis, Arkansas. No, there was. This, I was at the dog track. Yeah, you, know, you know, I grew up in Virginia. I grew up in rural uh, southwestern Virginia. A lot of snow there at that. You know, dur- during those days, and uh, you know, there was as a, it was there, in those days. As it was in those days, and the and the and the, and the lady that did, that did the weather on the TV, she said, "I'm expecting eight inches in the mountains." I drove up there and waited for four hours. She never showed up. And I've never gotten over it. Never. Was it snowy up there? It was. Did you, did you, did, did, did you, when she didn't show up, did you, did you cry out and was there a primal scream of anything? 
uh, when she didn't show up. Well, we were so all good and ready. Actually, what happened was did a uh, Yeti show up or Bigfoot? No Yeti or anything. So I decided what I would do is I would get up and you know, like she's not she's not showing up, right? So uh, you know, I dropped my pants to you know to take a whiz up there in the snow. And, you know, and of course, of course, you know, it, it hit the snow. It went into the snow and I was, oh, it was bad. Whew. Frostbite's bad. It's a cold night. Yeah, that's right. Shrinkage. <laughs> bad day. Bad night. <laughs> Full of fright. Don't women know about shrinkage? Mm-hmm. Seinfeld. Um, so, hey, a couple things to talk about here and, uh, and then we'll get to, uh, we'll get to the reason that you guys are tuning in, Brian Tui. That's right. Um, but, uh, for the first thing here is TikTok just sucks. This is, just, this just, <coughs> this is the kind of shit that just pisses me <laughs> off because listen, this is a platform. There, there's a video. It's actually really funny of a guy with, with a machine that like makes fart and shit noises. Okay. That's what it does. And he goes into bathrooms and he does this to get people's reaction. And his buddy is outside of the bathroom filming people coming out. Right. And they're like going, Oh my God. One guy even says, what did you eat, man? <laughs> and it's really funny. Who does number two work? Yeah. For? Right. Oh my God. There's, there are girls dancing around on TikTok half naked. There's all kinds of stuff going on, but ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know the most controversial thing on TikTok, the Dave and Doc podcast. I mean, who knew? Who we, knew? We 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 do not we do not meet their standards. <laughs> fucking standards on TikTok. Are you serious? That's I like, don't even know what that. I mean, what that's, does that's that like, mean? That's like a director at a porn movie going <laughs> reshoot that guy's. Like, I just I'm not getting the plot here. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> the hell is wrong with you? Standards and guidelines. You that department doesn't exist. I don't know where TikTok's offices are, and maybe they don't have any. I don't know. I don't know what's behind the scenes. But if you tell me they have one, an HR department, and two, a, a standards and guidelines department, I will tell you you are a lying son of a bitch because <laughs> they do not exist. Are you serious? Twice now, two two videos in a row. Because you good folks, you good folks, you like our show. I know that because we got 16, almost 17,000 subscribers. Thank you all for Thank subscribing. You. And so what I like to do, because sometimes... Don't it, watch it on TikTok. Well, some people say things like to me. They say... that People little, say little a lot of things it. to me. Put some people snippet. Some people say things <clears throat> to me like, geez, Dave, you're going bald. And then other people say things like, damn, Dave, you're short. Other people say things like, you know, hey, I like your podcast, but holy shit, man, it's like an hour and a half long. And I'm like, well, we get together. We like to talk. We got That's right. That's about. what we do. And so what we I just like got to things do, to say. I put little short things, little stories, snippets, and things we talk, little snippets, clips. I do those once a week. It's like then, an Easter egg. It is. And so like it comes out on YouTube and people watch the crap out of those. The last one has like 1300 views or something. Right. I do the same thing on the TikTok, right? The tick, the tick, I put tick, it on tick, the TikTok. TikTok. But but when I put it on TikTok, their standards and guidelines department says oh, because whole <laughs> no, we can't talk about what we standards and guidelines on TikTok. Are you serious? Standards and guidelines. WAP. Get, get, right, that that would be perfectly fine. WAP is on TikTok. If I had my pecker <laughs> out, swinging it, you were swinging sing a song. it, swinging it like a rope, a song. swinging it like a rope, that would make it on TikTok, and that'd be okay because that, that, that meets their community guidelines. Up. Our community guidelines. That's okay. Wait, d- d- I don't know what that means, though. What does that mean? I don't know. And do so we the, cuss too much? And so do we this, not? Do we not have? I mean, is it too long? No, no. That's it's, here's the thing. It doesn't even matter how long it is. I don't understand. You can split it up into two, right? So, like, if it's over ten right. minutes, they have you split it up into two. <laughs> okay. Or, or, or they'll just trim it so you'll just like miss some. But, but so the, the the one last week was the story of 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 the U.S. Census worker that came to the house and I destroyed a toilet, which is a funny story. It's a true story. It's a true funny story. I don't understand why they wouldn't want that because the the guy's got the fart machine in his in the I, stall. I don't know. I don't know. I I mean there there are. I, I, there are stuff on YouTube that people, sorry, uh, on TikTok. No, no, tic, YouTube, tic-a-tac. we like YouTube. Yeah, YouTube, there's, we like. there's stuff on TikTok that tic- people will send me. People will send me stuff on a TikTok, and I will I will watch that stuff, and I'm like, How, what? Because And now it even makes me wonder more, because we are breaking some community guy. The Dave and Dog podcast have essentially been fired from TikTok. I don't understand. I don't understand either. 
I mean, I don't even look at TikTok, so it doesn't bother me. But I, I just do when I need a break. I mean, they got that guy Cody Royale talking about. You know what I did, man? Yeah, I was gonna get me a workout, man. But you know what they messed up? They put the bush light next to the Gatorade. <laughs> yeah, that's on there. But we broke community <laughs> guidelines two two times now. I forget what the other one was about. What was the other one about? I don't remember. Oh, it it actually said we broke the guidelines. Yeah, so they said that we it it did not meet their standards and community guidelines. I don't understand. I don't either. Means. And so, and they give you no more information. And so, what Dave did is, I said, "Oh, well, that sounds terrible. I don't want to be one of those people." Uh, hey, tick a talk. Uh, why don't you tell a Dave and Doc uh, what you, what what we did wrong there, and we and we'll humbly apologize. And there's only a slight chance that I'll bash the shit out of you on the podcast, and they won't even get back to me. So fuck them. That's nice. I, I, don't, I don't. Yeah, I don't understand any of this. Screw you, TikTok. Okay, screw bye, you. bye bye, TikTok. Yeah, YouTube, you're awesome. Thank yeah. you. Thank YouTube you. YouTube doesn't care. YouTube thinks it's funny that I, you know, blew up a toilet and talked to the US Apple Podcast, workers. Spotify. Yeah, I mean, even Stitcher was better than TikTok. Did you know that Stitcher was owned by SiriusXM? <clears throat> I did not. I did not know that either. Stitcher. And they are no more, by the way. Stitcher. Stitcher's gone away. Oh, the way of the dodo. That's okay. Yeah, but you know, TikTok's still there. TikTok's still there. TikTok people are paying content creators on TikTok um, tons of money to like flash their ass like you know in a parking lot. But heaven forbid, dumps like a truck, truck, truck. Yeah. Um, okay. I thought it was the title of the episode or something like, and I'm like, okay, I mean, I can change that. It's not a big deal. I don't care. But no, okay. and it's like not Whatever. even in their rotation. Whatever. Like, oh, okay. Whatever. It's yeah. okay. We're not missing out. Like I said, I don't even look at TikTok. We're not. So, yeah. It's okay. Um, okay. I, not, I mean, I, you know, whatever. Speaking of uh, watching stuff, I can't stop watching the Adelson family. <laughs> I can't stop it, man. It's like it's like an effing soap opera. And I can't stop. Have you followed any of this? No. So, oh. I mean, so Dan Markell, he was a prof- law professor at Florida State back in like 2013, I think. And he got killed. And so uh, he was shot twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like, and lived for like twelve hours or so, but then then died. Um, had a wife, Wendy, and they had two two small boys. It, it's a whole long story, but the, the 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 gist of the conflict between Wendy and uh, Dan after the divorce, because they they were divorced, they weren't married at this time, <coughs> um, was that Wendy was going to move back to South Florida where her the rest of her family was. And Dan said, well, hey, we got the kids, right? And she's like, okay, well, okay. And so, like, Dan's parents, like, tried to offer him money to, like, move to South Florida. And, like, he would commute to his job or whatever. And, you know, because he only had to be there, like, a couple days a week or something. Right, and, like, just they, trying, to, trying to make it work And when, and when I say they offered him, mo- <coughs> offered him money, they offered him a million dollars. Wow. One million dollars. Um, they were obviously affluent. Yes, very, very much so. And wow. had money. Wow. Uh, I'm not very smart. Uh, you doctors and you big words. Um, you know, big words like big turds, they just take up. That's why I can't be on the ticket talk because I ain't very smart. 50, 50 cent words. 50 cent words. Boom, boom. Um, but so, 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 so all that happened and then, and then, and then boom, he gets killed. Imagine that. So, was so, the, was the fix in? Uh, well, so, <clears throat> right. So it looked like it was a hired hit person. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So it was a hired hit. The person who apparently was involved with the hit was also dating uh, Wendy's brother. So now oh. Wendy Wendy testified and like all. The, anyway, so like they've been back in court again now because there's there the, he he was indicted on murder charges, right. of hiring a hit hitman to kill D- Dan Markell. Of course, he says he he didn't do that. He said that uh, he he was being extorted. Uh, and, and, and has a, I don't know if he's innocent. I don't know if he's guilty. I don't know. He's got a good story. A compelling argument. He has a very compelling argument. <laughs> and listening to, uh, like some of that over the course of the last couple of days, like I can't stop listening to this, like just listening to testimony. This is where my life is. I'm, I'm banned from TikTok and I can't. <laughs> and you're watching the court I'm system. Watching court Cause system. you know, the, the U S court system is fantastic. Uh, so, oh, yeah. Well, and so she's a law professor, too. Wendy Adelson was a law professor. 
These people are guilty as shit. And, and That's Dan, all I know. And, and her brother, and her, and her Those brother. People, I don't care. They, they're, they're, they did it. He was, they, a, they he was an oral surgeon, it, And they too. covered it up. Oh, I... I <laughs> they covered it up. That's it all I'm saying. Seems like that. Um, wearing my Beast Philanthropy Whack. shirt. By the oh, way. nice. Mr. For, Beast. For Mr. Beast. Yeah. Hey. I, I bought this off the website. Come on, Mr. Beast. He gives he gives a ton of money to charity. I thought that'd be kind of cool, and I'm That's always awesome. into t-shirts. And I, Come I, on I, the show. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Beast, we'd love to have you on the show. Um, you won't be on the TikTok, but, you won't, but no. the YouTube, definitely. Mr. Beast could buy tic- TikTok, well, that's probably. That's true. Um, uh, and and the last thing here before we get into before, because I know I know we we got right, Brian, right, Brian. Right, Brian's coming right, up shortly. Yeah, here. That's right. And I, I don't want to wait, Brian. Uh, I don't want to make Brian wait because then we really will get banned from TikTok. Right. Um, this show that's on TV, I've never watched it because it just seems so stupid. And I want to know if you've ever watched it, and if you have, what it's about. Because, <coughs> excuse me, when I search what it's about, somebody actually wrote. Um, it was Entertainment Weekly wrote a show. Uh, sorry, wrote a wrote a piece on it that said, uh, "What the holy hell is this?" The Masked Singer. I have never watched it, but you know, Ken Jong's on there. Yeah, and and, and uh, Jenny McCarthy, Jenny McCarthy, uh, different yeah, different people have been on there. Yeah. I, I have not. I have not actually watched it. Well, I read a little. I've seen. I've seen the you know the commercials and things like yeah. that. But you know that's not. I, I don't. I don't get the opportunity for much TV. And so usually, if I am watching them, it's usually a sports game. A Porn. Sport, a, well, <laughs> no. Just, somebody, somebody comes in and catches you, just, and you say, oh, "Let me yeah. just. Let me just tell you, no, <laughs> no, I'm too old for that shit. Yeah, me too. Too much. Me too. too much. Me um, too. I've seen it all. Uh, it's all reruns." <laughs> it's all pink in the middle. Um, you know, so <laughs> that's probably a video on the ticket talk. Yeah. I, I, you know, they, you it, know, it is man. I, we don't even go there. Um, <clears throat> or, 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 you know, so, or like I'll watch like Yellowstone or something. So, yeah. so that's, you know, Jack Ryan, something, something like that. So, so no, I, I have not, but I mean, it kind of looks a little bit intriguing, but it also looks pretty stupid. So I, I looked into the show a little bit. Because I always thought, what what's the point of this show? Because there's no guests, like there's no contestants. Well, I mean, the, right? Well, it's kind of it's kind of they're competing in funky it, outfits well, and try to figure out who the celebrity is. Yeah, and so originally when I saw it, I thought, oh, <laughs> this is just another singing competition, and the and the contestants are wearing stupid outfits. And then like it'll be a big reveal at the end of who that great right, voice who it was. is. Who is it? But then I found out it's professional flipping singers up there, like actors and actresses and whatever right. people that can actually sing. Well, not all of them, but <coughs> but most of them. I mean, it, yeah, because you know, I mean, some of them are actresses or whatever, and it's like, oh, uh, are actors? Yeah, like I think Demi Lovato was on there the other night and whatever. And so like, so I started looking at like what the show is, and that's exactly what it is. It's people dressed up in these stupid ass costumes singing, and then the celebrities try to guess who, who the that celebrity is. is, who the celebrity singer is. Right. Nobody wins a contest. No. It's stupid as shit. Nobody gets a recording contract. It's celebrities. It's it's a bunch of rich people talking to other rich people. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. And people are watching it. How is this on TV? That's where we. How arrive. are we not on TikTok? That's how that that's because we don't look like Jenny McCarthy. Well. Speak for yourself. Or Demi Lovato. Or the uh, one, the pussycat girl. Uh, uh, shoot, what's one she on there too? Slutty McSlutterson. <laughs> no. What is her name anyway? I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, basic because that's, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I just, I can't understand that. Like, I, I for the longest time, I thought somebody's got to win. Somebody's got to win this competition, but it's not a competition. Like, it's just. You know, hey, I bet that no, it literally is. Can you guess the celebrity yeah. that's in the suit? But a celebrity's guessing other on, celebrities. On a celebrity, that's correct. You know, there's a game show in Japan. The password is a tootie top. <laughs> the password is syphilis. You know, there's a there's that's a, a sight word too. There's you know, a the sound you can't really sound that out. No, it's that's the tough. Sipilis, 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 sipilis. What's sipilis? Sipilis. Uh, um. There's a there's a game show in Japan where men and or women will put their bare butts into a cutout of a butt. Why the hell do you know? And this? your spouse. Why do you know? Your this? spouse. Why do you? Know oh, this? I saw this years ago. Why? So the spouse will go touching the butts and say, "No, that's my that's my spouse." Not kidding. That's a game. That's a game show I would watch. That's a game show I would watch. 
Every day. What's the name of it? Fill me up, Buttercup. <laughs> <laughs> it was called so you, Prostate so you, Exam. So you're just grabbing cheeks. Yeah, yeah. And like you pick which one is like, oh, that's yeah, that's. Oh, you're that's that's one hairy fat ass. That must be my husband. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> the one with the stains. That's my boy. <laughs> Can I see his britches before I touch it? Can I see him? Ooh, yeah, that's yeah, him. That's an actual game show. Man, get get... <laughs> why? Oh, right? The... Why do you know? See, that's not on the ticket talk. That's why not on the ticket talk. Why do you know? I ran this? across this on like it was a YouTube video. I think this was probably that's amazing. Ten years ago, of like just weird game shows from around the world, and that was one of them. I'm like, I would totally watch this. I would totally watch this. Totally watch this. That's like that is the greatest game show. What an idea! Guess that ass. <laughs> Tapping that ass. It's I mean, <laughs> grabbing that ass. I mean, there's probably, oh my it's gosh. Chuck Willerly. <laughs> Chuck Willery. Welcome to Grab That Ass. Willery Willery. Oh my. This is Willery Willery. Gosh. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> wow. Uh, we've Guess evolved. That we're, ass. We're, we're not getting on the ticket taka, so, so yeah, that's it. Can that's you it. guess that ass? Oh, yeah. Tell him what he's playing for, Bob. Um, it might be rigged. <laughs> it might be. Uh, and, yes. with, and with that being and, rigged. And with that, uh, uh, our next guest is Brian Tui. Brian, uh, uh, the, the, the first book he wrote was called The Fix Is In, and it's about, um, well, folks, it's, it's going to ruin your day. It's about professional sports all being rigged. Not all of it being rigged. Uh, I don't think is what he's trying to say, but I think that he's saying that the ability is there. They can do it legally. There's no problem. And there's been evidence of that. Right. I think that's what he's right. They're, they're not, they're not necessarily micromanaging all that, but, but they're definitely steering it in, in a certain direction that, that, you know, that, that they want it to be in predetermined outcomes are definitely out there. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, done it pretty predetermined outcomes are out there, out there. Yes. It's very, Vista print. Vista Vista print. print. Look at you, buddy. All right. You didn't skip English Here we go. class, though. Look at you. Sometimes. Uh, yeah, right? Uh, when not, he was not, watching that Japanese game show. Right. I wonder if Brian's watched that game show. Maybe we'll ask him. We should. Uh, um, we, we should We should definitely. Hey, Brian, have you ever watched uh, we should definitely Guess That him, Ass? Have you ever watched that? Guess do you, That Ass. Do you think that that is uh, something that's appropriate? <laughs> anyway. All right. So we're going to get to Brian, and and then and then um, I'm excited. Well, this will be good. This, yeah. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. I think Brian, Brian, Brian's on the line. So uh, you're gonna, you'll are gonna you see a really cool effect here, folks, and then we'll go right into the interview. It's just like, it's amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Uh, let's get to Brian Tui uh, from his website, thefixesin.net. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are here uh, with our next guest, and we're very excited to talk to the one and only Brian Tui from the website thefixesin.net. Uh, uh, Brian's uh, f- first famous slash infamous book uh, was The Fix Is In. A a, um, a companion to that, a sequel, was The Fix Is Still In, A Season in the Abyss, Sports Gambling versus the NFL's Integrity, and Larceny Games, which is my personal favorite. Uh, sports gambling, game fixing, and the FBI. Brian, welcome to the Dave and Doc podcast. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it's almost, it. Guys. It's like Thanks deja vu. Us. It's like we've yeah. done this before. It's I weird. Know, it's really weird. Um, yeah. So, so, Brian, uh, for our listeners' sake, just if you would, just give us a little bit of your background. You got into writing. Uh, how did you get into sports journalism? What what kind of tickled the spidey sense there? Well, when my wife basically said I should write a book because I'd been working on trying to be a screenwriter after going to film school. And the first book I kind of came up with, first idea was doing like a sports conspiracy book because I'd been a sports fan my whole life. I knew a lot about sports and I always had questions about sports and that sort of thing and found some things kind of shady and a little too coincidental. And as I kind of looked into it, I kind of came to a realization that, you know, there's people say there's all these different conspiracies surrounding sports, but really it's one main thing. And to me, that main thing was the fact that sports could potentially be manipulated, scripted or fixed to get the outcomes that they wanted. And so that's what I delved into. And by the time I was done writing the fixes in, which was my first book, I really walked away from it knowing that definitely sports have been fixed. Sports are fixed. And it really boils down to the fact of the matter that 
if a league wants to fix its own games, like if the NFL wants to fix an NFL game, it can do so and it can do so completely legally. There's no law that prevents it from doing this. And if there's no law preventing it from doing it, then why don't they do it? Because it would just add entertainment to the product. And that's what they are. They're show business. And that's yeah. why the subtitle of the book is, you know, the showbiz manipulations of the NFL, <laughs> Major League Baseball and all the rest. Yeah, it's one of the interesting things that, that I caught that you said in one of your interviews was just that, that the NFL actually went to court to fight this very fact that they were an entertainment venue. So they're, they're really no different from that perspective as like the WWE, right? Correct. Yeah. And it's all the same thing, you know, professional wrestling, the UFC boxing, major league baseball, it all is basically sports entertainment for lack of a better term. And, you know, even if it was just, you know, if they just said they were sports, like you said, there's no law that protects you from a game being fixed. The two closest things that exist one is called the quiz show law or colloquially old known as the quiz show law, right. which came out of the 1950s quiz show yes, scandal, which right, is sure, what they right. did yes. back then <clears throat> yep. is they fixed game shows. The television right. networks fixed game shows to make it more entertaining. And so Congress passed a law after discovering this that says you cannot fix an intellectual contest. So like right. today you can't fix Jeopardy. You can't right. fix Wheel of Fortune. Right. But that doesn't mean some other type of television show like Survivor or American Idol or some sort of talent-based show can't be fixed or manipulated. It's just intellectual contests. And obviously sports don't fall into that. Yeah, so, so the other the other area is game fixing, which is the Sports Bribery Act from 1964. Right. But that says it's illegal to bribe someone to alter the outcome of a sporting event. And if you're not paying anybody a bribe, then again, you're not exactly falling under that right. law. So you're therefore, within, you're within the, the says, legal limits. Yeah. So the league so you, says we want to fix a game. And that's interesting. You brought up like Survivor and America's Got Talent because there, I was actually saw an article when I was kind of doing some research before we did this interview, and it was saying, you know, how it's amazing how much of that is scripted. You know, it's it is it is definitely not just an off the cuff type of thing. And so and so certainly, sure, your your research, and we'll talk more about that. You know, shows shows some maybe not to because it's not a it's not a Survivor show when you know, the Patriots are playing the Giants or whatever's happening, but it's still the same principle of, of you're not, you're not violating any laws here and it is an entertainment type, type uh, program. Well, and every, you know, every NFL game was preceded with the, fo the following is a presentation of the National right, Football League. Right, and it's right, included right. with that, you know, what you just watched was a presentation of the National Football League. And what does right. that mean? Nobody ever thinks about it, but everybody who's a sports fan who's watched these games have heard that. But what does it mean? Well, it means it's a presentation. And right. everything that goes along with that loaded word. So let me ask you this. So you said that, you know, you wanted to write a book on sports conspiracy. What was there a game you watched a certain <clears throat> Super Bowl or a certain game that made you think about, well, maybe something's up here? Nothing really specific. It was just kind of a thing that built up over time. My brother had always been kind of a sports gambler. And a lot of times yeah. you would see where, and that's always the sports gambler's call, right? I mean, if you lose, you say the game was fixed because <laughs> obviously I can't be wrong my best. Right? That's right. Of course. of course. That's why it was, that's you right. know, that's went right. against me. That's the thing. But you, you know, you look at things enough and you start adding things up, especially like you say, when you think about what benefits the league and, you know, things so often where you could have four teams, you know, playing in the championship games, two of them are going to go to the Super Bowl. And you look at which two teams lost and you think about what kind of Super Bowl matchup that would have made. More often than not, the teams that made it were the best stories that made it. Not necessarily yeah. the best teams, but it was the best story, the best thing that they could hype and promote. And isn't that kind of a coincidence? And then you started looking at, again, before I wrote the book, like what happened with the Patriots after 9-11 and how it was a whole patriotic thing and how they changed even the logos of the Super Bowl mm -hmm. and that sort of thing to, you know, cement mm -hmm. this whole idea of patriotism along with the Patriots and Tom Brady and being introduced that. as a team. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the right. whole thing. And then you mm -hmm. had the saints after hurricane Katrina and all of that. And it's just amazing how these coincidences, supposed coincidences keep playing out and keep again, benefiting <laughs> the league and the people involved. So a couple of things. So do you think when we're, and again, we're just talking about pro football here. We'll, we'll, we'll expand. Cause I know you don't just think it's professional football. No, um, no. So, I mean, so when you when you look at this, when we're talking about fixing a game, what do you think would go into that? Is is it the officials that are involved or the coaches or the general managers involved or the players involved? Who do you think is actually involved? Well, it's it's interesting because I don't think every game is fixed. So I don't think like, you know, they had those ads for the NFL beginning of the season where they had to, you know, table read 
where they're all sitting around reading the script for the <laughs> right, season. Right, 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 right. I don't think that's what happens at all. I don't think they get together and say, okay, well, this year uh, the Eagles are going to win the Super Bowl. Let's make that happen, everybody. Yeah. I think what happens is certain storylines emerge or certain storylines already existed, like Aaron Rodgers going to the Jets. That was a storyline, and they were going to build that up. And the way what they do, I believe, is that the referees are a main part of that. Because the referees, a lot of the penalties are subjective. A lot of penalties that can make or break games are subjective, whether it's holding, pass interference, that sort of sure. thing. So Absolutely. I think oftentimes the leagues will say, look, you know, even in basketball, we want a certain player like LeBron James, we want him to succeed. So that kind of puts the onus on the referees to like kind of create a bubble around that guy. And if anybody comes close to follow him, call the foul. If so we could give them more room to operate. And if you give LeBron or Kobe more room to operate, guess what? They're going to score more points. Their team's going to win more often. And it's going to, again, benefit everybody involved. But I think it can go higher than that. I think it can be more than the referees because you look at game tanking in the NBA. And that's, yeah. a, like, oh, that's yeah. like a real proven thing. Yes, I mean, Mark 100%. Cuban has literally said, I told Absolutely. my team lose. Yeah. Now, those are fixed games. I don't know why anybody doesn't see it as such, but those are fixed games. If the team owner and the general manager are telling the players and the coaches, it's in our best interest if you lose, and then they go out there and lose, that's a fixed game. And you don't get any refund. You don't get any money back. It's not cheaper tickets or cheaper parking or cheaper hot right. dogs. They right. still put it on like it's a regular NBA game, but the team sure. going out there has no intention to win whatsoever. So it can go all the way to the top. And it's proven that it can go all the way to the top. Right. Yet people think this is a conspiracy. Who do you think who do you think controls the money? Because I know a lot of your things are are based around sports gambling and how that used to be illegal and now it's there's a there's a gambling ad. I mean, there's people that actually come on on the, we'll talk about ESPN because I think you and I have the same thought process about ESPN. Uh I've I I've we've had podcasts that are just about my hatred toward ESPN. <laughs> we'll get there. But um He's been waiting. So, okay, I, I just yeah. listen. But so I mean, so do you think that that's how this sort of evolved is around gambling? Because that would make sense because you know, who controls that money? What do you, I don't quite follow the question. So 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 do you think that gambling was was the catalyst that started game fixing in general, no matter what the sport is? Do you think gambling well, and the fact that gambling was illegal, do you think that was the mob that was controlling that at the time? Were they in control of the money and and how these games played out? Well, I think you're getting there's kind of there's two avenues to this whole idea of fixing. So I mean, there is the avenue of mob and organized crime and gamblers fixing games for gambling purposes. Sure, and that's something that literally dates back to the 1800s, if not before. Right. Then. I mean, again, right. Proven. The idea of game fixing for an entertainment reason. For the storylines and that, it's kind of they're kind of two separate avenues. Yeah. So I guess so. I, so mean, I, I guess what I mean by that is, do you think that 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 do you think the NFL has always been this way, or do you think that that people gambling on the games was putting squeezes on general managers to fix certain games, and that's how this started uh, to to what it is today? Well, I think I think it for the NFL. I mean, again, it was founded by in many ways, gamblers. I mean, mm -hmm. the Mara family, they were bookmakers before they bought the Giants. Right. Rooney was a known gambler, horse player before he became the Steelers owner. Bidwell, who was with the Cardinals, he was an associate of Al Capone in Chicago. I mean, they have those kind of backgrounds. But I think where it really turned for this entertainment thing was probably in the nineteen late 50s, early 1960s, yeah. where television really got involved and really started throwing money at the NFL. And so the NFL, like one former player, Bernie Parrish, who wrote in a book, he said basically when the NFL got all this money from the television networks, it felt like television bought the NFL. And it changed the way the game was played. It changed Definitely. the way the game was presented. But I really think the real turning point, in my opinion, was Super Bowl three, Because I think that's really the first time where the NFL really fixed one of their own games. And that was all due to the merger and all the money that was involved with that to legitimize the AFL when it was coming right. into the NFL. And that's right. what made Joe Namath, you know, the house name. Jets, Jets, Jets. The but I think, yeah. yeah, but I think that game was undoubtedly fixed. And I think that was like became a little thing they could put in their back pocket to use later. And I think like a lot of things, they just started, well, let's do it here. Well, let's <clears> do it here. And all of a sudden it just became a thing where now it's just an ongoing, you know, we want this to happen. We'll make it happen type of thing. And and you think this doesn't stop at pro sports, right? Like you're seeing this in the collegiate level as well. 
Well, college, I don't know how much of that is, again, for entertainment purposes. Yeah. For gambling, for game fixing, I'm certain that goes on in big time NCAA basketball and football. No, no doubt about it whatsoever. I mean, I just don't think anybody's looking for it. I, you but know, I the, think it's everywhere in college sports. But again, that's on the gambling side, not sure, the entertainment sure. side of it all. The, the the sport that I've always been the, the most suspicious of is boxing because it seems like that is the easiest one in the world because it's easy to just fall down. Yeah. Right. I mean, the NFL, there's a lot of things going on and, you know, testosterone gets involved and guys want to say, well, you know what? I'm running a touchdown here no matter what or whatever. But like in, in boxing, I mean, you know, I, I used to make a joke. Like, if you want to pay me $10 million, I'll let Mike Tyson punch me. Like that is not, oh, who wouldn't? Yeah. I mean, right. I mean, that Fair will, I, you know, <laughs> I, I'll look funny for about a month or two, but I'll have $10 million. Yeah, and, exactly. and you almost see that same thing because they build people up. I, I don't know how, I'm sure you follow boxing, but I always think about the fight between Lennox Lewis and Michael Grant. It was around 2000, 2001. Michael Grant was undefeated. They had rushed him through the ranks so he could be undefeated and fight Lennox Lewis. Well, Lennox Lewis was so much better than him but they made it a show for like three or four rounds. And I mean, he had knocked Michael Grant down like seven times at this point. And I'm like, there is no way this anyone thought this was going to be a real fight. There's no way this is a payday for Michael Grant <laughs> and just another fight for Lennox Lewis to move on to the next person. Well, it's, I mean, boxing has a terrible history of that. Yeah. I mean, it literally goes back a hundred years. I mean, my favorite one is, uh, and it's, it's dated. Nobody knows the guy's name, but his name was Primo Carnero. And essentially, he was a big, like, six-foot-six guy back in the, like, 1920s. And literally, the mob fixed every single one of his fights, wow. including when he won the heavyweight championship of the world. And everybody assumed he was a fighter because he was a big giant. I mean, six-foot-six back in the 1920s. Oh, yeah. You know, monstrous. Yeah. And so they assumed he could fight, but he really couldn't. And so the mob built him up, made him heavyweight champion, and then this very first title defense, the mob didn't fix the fight. And they bet heavily against him. And he got creamed and he became yeah. a, he was basically out of boxing and he became a professional wrestler after that. But I mean, <laughs> wow. so, I mean, that's a hundred years ago and there still right. goes on today. I mean, the 1950s, I mean, it was literally run boxing by organized crime. Literally one guy, the guy by the name of, um, oh my God, I totally blanked out on his name. Um, are we talking about, I can't think of his name. But anyway, Don King. No. no, 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 before that. <laughs> yeah, but Don King was a, you I, I know, came he came later. afterwards. But yeah. Same thing. One guy, like, literally ran the whole show. Yeah. And he determined who fought who, where they fought, when they fought, and oftentimes who won and who lost before the paydays. Yeah. And, and you wonder that with the UFC, too, because I'm a big UFC fan. You know, I watch it virtually every weekend, and it's kind of the same guy. I mean, you got Dana White that's just kind of in control of that whole universe, really. Yeah. Well, and, and that's, I remember the the mobster's name was Frankie Carbo. Okay. okay. Frankie Carbo, it, it was, it's very similar to Dana White. I mean, I, in the fix is still in my book. I wrote a chapter about how the two almost like mirror each other. Yeah. And the fact that Frankie Carbo back in the mobster days, like I said, ran it. I mean, and not just like the heavyweight division, he ran them all. And he was working with two guys, uh, Arthur Wirtz, who owns the Blackhawks, and James Norris, who owned the Red Wings, they owned like controlling interest in Madison Square Garden and Chicago Stadium and some other places. And they put on these boxing matches, but they worked with organized crime the whole time. But that's the way they ran boxing. And the way Dana White and the UFC operate today, it mirrors each other. Yeah. Because again, if it's like if you piss off Dana White, he'll kick you out of the UFC and then you're right. out of, you're basically right. you're out done. of it. Right. Yeah. And it's the same thing with Carbo in the 50s. If you got on the wrong side of the mob, you were out of boxing. They would just make sure you were out of boxing. Yeah. So, so when you wrote, when you wrote the book, the fix is in, when you wrote that, was there ever a point before it got published that you thought, uh, maybe not, or, or were you like, did you write it? And you're like, you know what? No, push forward. Let's get this thing out there. Oh, did you, yeah, did, I did, did, you, I mean, you expect, I'm sure you expect it backlash because if you write a book like this, of course, but what was the level of backlash you got? Was there anything that surprised you? Did somebody, did anybody, did any, any organizations come after you legally? No, not at all. Wow. I mean, the, the backlash, actually, the interesting thing was, and it's almost goes to this day, all the email I get from people is extremely positive. And yeah. a lot of it is from people who say, I always thought this way and nobody like put it into words put or it, showed it the evidence of what it is right. and how it happens. Right. And they were like thanking me for doing it. What really threw me off, 
and what kind of almost derailed my career in a way was I wrote larceny games. Yeah. Because larceny games was based off all these FBI files that I obtained that no one had ever accessed before. Mm-hmm. Nobody had ever seen them before. I was the first one I wound up on an FBI watch list because I asked for <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm dead serious. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was on That's an FBI great. watch list wow. for all my well. Freedom of Information Act requests. But <laughs> Wow. So when the book was going to be published, my publisher and I got contacted by ESPN, HBO Sports, Yahoo Sports. I had interviews with people from 60 Minutes. Sports Illustrated said they were going to run an excerpt from my book in their magazine. Because, again, this was never before seen stuff. It implicated Hall of Fame athletes, yeah, all these famous people. And then none of the outlets did anything with the book whatsoever. Wow. They didn't say it was great, say it was bad, review it. Nothing they acted like it didn't exist. And they basically flushed it down the toilet. Wow. So just try so what to... Do you, what do you think ch- really changed that? Is that go back to the money trail? And, and uh, like what, what do you think really changed their tune on that since they had made such a big deal about it? And then, and then all of a sudden it was just crickets. Well, they're all involved with professional sports. So, I mean, they all, CBS... How many billions have they given the NFL over the years? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. You know, Don't ESPN funds so it's the, the money. NBA. The money. Well, yeah. So, it's and money. that's what that's why there's no investigative reporting in sports, right? Yeah. Because ESPN's not going to give a billion plus dollars a year to the NBA, <clears throat> then go investigate and see how many pl- athletes are doing drugs or right. You don't want to know what's in the whatever. closet. Yeah. Leave the closet shut. No, just eat the sausage. Just, don't look at how it's made. Yeah. That's just going to ruin their investment. So right. none of these outlets and every major media conglomerate is involved with professional sports in many ways. Oh, sure. And literally fund them. So without that television money, you know, professional sports doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, speaking of our friends at ESPN. <laughs> uh, so I, 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 I caught like a couple of blurbs that you had said about ESPN. And I know you're on the Dan Patrick show. And Dan, I don't know how that that was the weirdest. That, and and Dan that just, bizarre. I mean, he despises ESPN, calls them the mothership, mothership. and all that, and I love yeah. it. Um, what was your experience with ESPN, and what is your opinion of ESPN? Well, ES, I've been on. I mean, I don't know how many different podcasts and radio shows I've been a guest on. I lost track. I mean, it's literally over. Oh, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I, but I've never been on one of the major ESPN radio stations. <laughs> ESPN Chicago, <clears throat> New York, LA. I forget what the other ones are. Yeah. None of one of those channels have ever had me on. Right. Never. And huh. the one in Chicago actually was going to have me on. And one of the hosts, who was also the producer, was like, Oh my God, you know, I'm going to help promote your book, blah, blah, blah. And then the like the morning of the interview, he like canceled it and then wouldn't respond to my emails and, like completely ghosted me. <laughs> wow. And then when I wrote when wow. I wrote this article with Lance Williams, who was the co author of the Barry Bonds book and Balco, uh, Game of Shadows. Yeah. Him and I worked for a year, basically, on this uh, article that wound up in Sports Illustrated. But he worked for this place called the Center for Investigative Reporting. So I kind of teamed up with them to produce this article. And we went to ESPN twice because it was the, it was basically the first article written about a potentially fixed Major League Baseball game in like 100 years. Yeah. And we went to ESPN twice, and twice they turned it down. So wow. the Center for Investigative Reporting... ESPN said, no, we're not going to touch it. And, he, and Sports Illustrated, it was really even hard for them to do it, which kind of shocked me because, you know, they kind of lost their integrity too along the way. But, yeah, I mean, these major, major outlets, they're too in bed with the leagues to, like you say, you know, figure out how the sausage is made. Yeah, e- ESPN sold their soul a long time ago. Oh, yeah. And, and, well, the and, E is for entertainment. Yeah, right. ESPN. Yeah. Entertainment sports program. Yeah. I mean, I, and I used to, and I grew up with ESPN, you know, I grew up uh, watching, you know, Chris Berman when I was a kid and I thought, you know, he was great. And sports center was actually cool. Yeah. You know, and, you know they, they even had like the CD that came out with all this ESPN music and everything. And then it just went to shit. I mean, they, you know, they, 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 they went and married Disney. They went and married Snow White. And, and now they're just, I just, it's, it's hard to see what they've done to Monday Night Football. Like, I think that's just like an American institution, and yeah. they just ruined it. Well, and uh, now they're getting in the gambling game because he's yeah, oh. getting in the gambling game. Oh yeah, which has made it even worse. Yeah, I, because yeah, now it it's now everything is oh this guy got injured. Well, how's that affect the points spread? How's that affect right. the over under? How's it affect your fantasy team? Yeah, that's what it's become all about. It's not necessarily about the sport and what happens within the sport. It's how does it affect you, the viewer? 
but it's really not you, the viewer, to the gambling viewer, which is what we're trying to cater to because we're going to suck more money out of you. Right now. So, so you, you, you wrote, you wrote these books and you've been on podcasts and everything. Was there, so before, when you started kind of thinking games were fixed and things are coincidences, like you said, I mean, did it really ruin sports for you at that point? Or is it still, is the entertainment value still there for you? No, it's not the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any means. I mean, that's a lot of people complain about no, that, it. They that'd say, be, oh, you that'd ruined. be hard to come back from. Right. I mean, yeah, it's <clears throat> a lot of people say, well, you ruined sports for me. And I'm kind of like, well, good. <laughs> <laughs> so what, so. so what's the, I guess maybe, maybe even just, just major sport. And I know you'd said earlier, there's not a, you know, there's not necessarily a specific game or anything. What's the most, I guess, the the most outlandish fix maybe for like, say, NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball? I mean, is there, you know, in, in your research times, was there just that one where you're like, of course, everybody knows, or maybe the opposite where you were most blown away by, well, I mean, we know this stuff's fixed, but this is kind of more obscure, but it actually made a huge difference. Did you did you find any of those things within your within your studies on this? Well, I think it's more <clears throat> things that, it seems super obvious to me that people like just didn't celebrate. say anything about. It. Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, like when Kobe retired and mm -hmm. he went out with scoring 60 points. That he night. did. Yeah, he did. Right. And he shot like 800 shots or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> right. Dude, he did. He did. Yeah. And this is, he like, couldn't move either. I mean, he was, you know, yeah. getting a two foot, two, two inch jumper off, you know? Oh yeah. And, and everybody was like, Oh my God, he's still like one of the best players ever. It's like that game was like, it was like a Globetrotters game. <laughs> and yet that's right. a legit nba game it's like yeah. it's game tanking those are legit nba games that are totally fixed and no one seems to blink an eye at same with that one yeah like nobody seemed to care that oh that's what happened i mean they did the same thing major league baseball had one um was it tyler skaggs who uh od'd on yes for the angels yeah yeah, yeah the, and the, then the, they the, went the, out like pitched a no hitter or something like a combined no hitter like on the night they were celebrating and all that i'm like yep. No. You really gonna believe that that's just a coincidence <laughs> that that happened, right. or maybe that something else is going on? But yet people just you know clap like seals at these sort of things, and then like if you can't <laughs> if you can't see through that, I can't help you on the other stuff. I really I just can't. But I, think... I don't try. What I'm what I try to do is not make people stop watching sports. Is I just want them to be educated and understand what it is they're consuming. Yeah, because that's the thing. I mean, because everybody needs an outlet. You know, whether it's going to the movies or reading sure. a book or whatever. And sports is a great outlet. It can be great entertainment, and that's fine. But I just want fans who are watching to look at it with open eyes and take their fan head off and realize what it is they're consuming. Because, like I said, when I say I ruin sports and that I don't care if I do for people, but then maybe, you know what, you'll spend time doing something better. You'll spend your money on something better. <laughs> right. And that's not a bad thing. Well, I mean, people spend millions and millions of dollars of a, a, a year on the WWE. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 so profitable and sometimes. It's 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 laughable. Like, you know, because I I grew up and my my dad watched professional wrestling. So I remember watching professional wrestling, watching Ric Flair. Thought he was awesome, you know. And and somewhere around ten years old or so, I'm like, oh, this is all predetermined. <laughs> oh, and it it kind of ruined it for me. But at the same time, like I kind of got over it. I was kind of like, you know, but when I think about other sports, when I think about pro football, which is, which pro football and college football are my two, you know, that's my two favorite sports. Uh, but I, you know, I watch basketball, college and pro, uh, you know, I, I watch tennis and uh, I, I don't really watch golf unless I need a nap. Um, but, but I mean, it's, it is funny because you, you, you know, we're talking about, did you, you know, what games kind of like clued you into maybe this was, what are the biggest games you saw? The first time I think this really ever like popped in my head in football was Super Bowl. I think it was Super Bowl 40 with uh, the Steelers and the Seahawks. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and so it was <laughs> Jerome Bettis coming home and have finally getting to a Super Bowl, coming home, going to a Super Bowl and winning that game. And the officials after the game, the head official, the, the, the referee, actually said yeah i screwed that game up yeah like he that apologized. was what, he, he was actually Seahawks, like two or three two years later or something like yeah that. he he came out publicly and said yeah listen i i i jacked that up because the seahawks completely outplayed them they were the better team it was so obvious and like every i mean everything was a penalty no matter what like it was yeah. offensive pass interference and they never called that then I mean, it was just crazy, and it was always on a scoring play or a first down. It was always something that kind of got them moving backwards. 
And after that, I thought, now that's funny. And then, like you said, the 9-11, right after 9-11, the Patriots win the Super Bowl. Come on. That one really got me. But I'm telling you, the one that that, that I think is one of the bigger ones was Super Bowl 47, and we talked about that. That was after Hurricane Katrina and the Saints beat a much better Colts team. You know, and well, it's like they, they, they can't beat Hank they, Basket. You know, can't I mean, catch a onside <laughs> kick. <laughs> I'm a huge Peyton Manning fan, obviously. Well, anyway, and, anyway, but and the other thing too is, you know, you think about that game too is Peyton Manning. His dad was Archie Manning, who was the Saints' quarterback. Right. So yeah, Peyton right. Manning grew up in and around that environment his whole life. Oh yeah, and amazingly, he was the one who couldn't hit his receivers and threw that touchdown interception. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's like mm-hmm. he was. A company man, and then Super Bowl 50, they send them out. You know, the sheriff goes out on the highlight reel. Super Bowl 50, right? Was that right. his, like, you know, you do that for us, we'll do this for you type of thing moment? Yeah, you just wonder. I mean, it was a good business and a point in his career when he really couldn't even throw a ball anymore. No, I mean, he really and he was on. He was on, surely on steroids or HGH because it wasn't HGH packages arriving in his house for his wife, <clears> quote yeah. unquote. Yeah, right that after is, he had the neck surgery. Is, yep. Yeah, yep, yeah. Come on. <laughs> the forehead might have got a little bit bigger. I mean, we've talked about that before. And as yeah. as as much as it pains me to ask you this, though, but Super Bowl Forty Seven, Harbaugh versus Harbaugh. I'm a Niners yeah. fan, but that just seemed to be such a coincidence that two brothers played against each other, and that was the story. Like yeah. the story wasn't that the best quarterback in the of the two teams, Alex Smith, was on the bench. That wasn't the story. The story yeah. was brother versus brother. Yeah. But I mean, that's what I mean. It's it becomes almost like boxing matches how they hype these things up, and that's yeah. It's not like you say. It's not about teams anymore. Almost in any sport, yeah. you know, it's really the NFL revolves around the quarterbacks. That's really all that it's about, and that's why you rarely see a team with like a great running back who makes it to the Super Bowl. It's always the quarterbacks in the NBA. It's the same thing. It's never you know the Lakers versus the Bulls. It's Kobe versus Jordan or whatever. You know what I mean? It's about <clears throat> right. that star player and that's what they care about and that's what they hype around and that's who gets usually the benefit of the calls. And so one of the, the big questions that I wanted to ask you is, is if, if, if all this is true and these, these, these games, these games are fixed. (laughs) Well, I mean, like you said, what am I making up? You were doing so well, Dave. I know. I know. What are you talking about? This is like, this is the, the, the question that like, that I wanted, I mean, I've wanted to ask you this for a long time. Is if so, we, we say these games are fixed, and there does seem to be a lot of evidence that indicate. And again, it is it for entertainment. Then, how, why do you think it is? Do you think it's just uh, ignorance is bliss from the people watching? Do you think that that's what like the NFL, the NBA, uh, NHL, MLB, all they all just play on that saying, hey, no one's ever really gonna jump that ship? I mean, there's probably still people that think professional wrestling's real. Do you think that that's what they play on? Like, is it, like, how would they keep that a secret? Or are they even trying to keep it a secret? Oh, they don't really necessarily need to. I mean, fans will watch, like you say, fans will watch professional wrestling, which is, I mean, it's great athletes. They're very entertaining. They sure. put on a hell of a show. Yeah. It's worth watching. It's entertainment. But they're, like you said, there's probably a few fans who don't believe it's scripted. But whatever, most of them know it, and they don't care. Right. And I don't think, you know, if that happened in the NFL, if we found out, you know, I don't know if people would stop watching football because they love football. They love baseball. But, I mean, the thing is, is how would you prove it, prove it that this has happened? And that's what I think, you know, is in the league's back pocket is, you know, I think even if Peyton Manning came out and on the Manning cast, you know, on Monday Night Football Mm -hmm. said, you know, Eli, you know, I fixed that game. I fixed that Super Bowl against the Saints. I totally threw it. I made sure the Saints won. And the league rewarded me. They gave me Super Bowl 50. That happened. Everybody would come out against Peyton Manning. Probably even Eli would come out against right, Peyton right, Manning. Right. You know, they'd all be because they'd be like, well, where's your proof? Where's your evidence that this is true, Peyton? And Peyton would be like, I just know what I did. I know what I played because they're not going to write it down. They're not going to send out emails and say, hey, yeah. Peyton, make sure Sunday you throw the game, remember? <laughs> you know, there's <laughs> right. going to be no evidence that he can present to you. And that's the big thing about this. That's why it's still just cons- a conspiracy is because, you know, unless you get a whistleblower, and even when you get a whistleblower, they have to have something backing up beyond their word. Right. And then you could point to a game and say, oh, look how bad I played. But that was the thing I found interesting in the FBI files is when the FBI was looking into this in the 1960s and 70s for gambling, 
they would have evidence from what they would call a top echelon informant who was like somebody high up in the mob or some major bookmaker. Yeah. And they would say, look, this bookmaker is working with this quarterback and they're going to fix Sunday's game for the other team. And then that quarterback would go out and throw for like 120 yards and three interceptions. And the FBI would be like, well, just because he had a bad game doesn't mean he threw it. Right. You know, we have to get some sort of wiretap or something where he's talking about throwing the game for us to really prove it. And that's why a lot of these FBI files fell apart is because sometimes, you know, the gambler and player would only work for one game and that would be it. It's not that's what you know, it's what you can prove. Yeah. So you and know you know it, thing. but you can't but they don't like I said, they don't have it in writing. So it's yeah. it's not it's yeah. not something that you just yep, that's it. The evidence is right there. And but there's like been say, <clears throat> when I look if you look at my books, what am I making up? What part of it is not true? Right. <laughs> so it's just a question of, do you want to go that one extra step and admit that this stuff is probably rigged and been manipulated and fixed, or you just want to take all that evidence and throw it in the trash? There's been players things. that have come forward, though, right? Like, there's been players that have come forward and mentioned, because I've seen interviews with players who have said, said, yeah, I mean, we were told not to do this or not told to do that, and it doesn't seem like those go anywhere. No, like, it doesn't well, seem like there's Nobody wants that, to follow it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, a lot of times those interviews are on ESPN or whatever. I mean, yeah. I think the wildest one was, and I can't remember the guy's name. Was it Derek Jackson or something like that? He was a I, buccaneer. I know who you're talking. He said like the officials would like come in and like show him the script and. Well, he was the one who was he was yeah. like literally laughing during the Super Bowl interview when he said, "Yeah, you guys really think this is real? Are you nuts? Are you, you guys yeah. don't understand what's going on?" Right. Yeah, I, I I remember that. I think that he even ended up on ESPN talking about it too. So I don't remember how far it went, but I mean, it was it was a bizarre interview he gave, and he was basically giving it all away, and nobody seemed to care. Yeah, for more I, than a day. Yeah, it's it's just interesting to me that the more you think about it, and I mean, there's been like the immaculate reception. That one was one of the more famous ones where they talked about like they actually went and called the league office. And said, "What do you want us to do here, or whatever?" And yeah. like came out and said, ah, "It was a completed catch. You didn't touch anybody. <laughs> you know, uh, go Franco. <laughs> you know." Yeah. So I mean, it's 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 interesting. I mean, do you think that do you think that the script ever changes in NFL games, like in the middle of a game, like like well, some, like let's the, say somebody gets hurt and then like a backup comes in, like a veteran backup comes in, and you're like, "Oh, wait a minute, now hang on, this guy is a legend. This is a better story." Well, I think that has a lot to do with it. I mean, I think, you know, like I said, I think the Jets were supposed to be a story this year with sure. Aaron Rodgers. I yeah. think everybody knew that. And then he, it's hurt. Yeah. And then the next, what, game, two games, the Jets were terrible. Yeah. Just flat out horrible. And now all of a sudden, look, the Jets keep winning. Isn't that weird? Now, look, Aaron Rodgers might be coming back before the end of the season. Who would have thought it? <laughs> but is that really because the Jets are a good team? Or is it because maybe they're getting a little help here and there? And something is going on behind the scenes to make sure this story actually becomes a bigger story. I, I I did always think it was interesting that Eddie DeBartlo basically got booted out of the NFL for gambling. You know, yeah. like he was, you know, he's gambled on a boat. Well, Major League <laughs> Baseball wouldn't let him buy the White Sox, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Because that's of right. his that's right. background. Because of his shady background. And... Yeah, go figure Major League <laughs> Baseball was worried about somebody with this shady background. I know, was. right? <laughs> Do you think that there are any professional sports that this this doesn't affect at all, or do you think no. it, it just it clouds them all? You think, think so? Well, wherever there's money, there's corruption. Right. Right. I mean, business, religion, you know, you name it. There's money. There's corruption. Follows. Yeah. And so it's just a matter of what level, what degree, how deep does it go? But I mean, I find it bizarre that, and I think I, I don't remember if I said this on the Dan Patrick show or not, but I've said it before. You know, you look at soccer around the world, we know it's been fixed, corrupted in countries all over the place. Tennis, corrupted all over the place. Rugby, corrupted all over the place. Cricket, the Indian Cricket League, which is like their NFL is the most corrupt thing in the world. I mean, there's, you know, things corrupted all over the world, except it doesn't happen here in the United States. At least that's what ESPN. And the right. Rest of the that's league. what they would say. It right. never happens here. It hasn't happened here. And it won't happen here because now we have integrity units watching over it all. Are you people insane? <laughs> it's it's a worldwide <laughs> crime. It happens everywhere. It'd be like saying prostitution occurs everywhere except the United States. Right. It's yeah, especially in Vegas. That's a, <laughs> yes. What? Yeah. <laughs> um 
Brian, so what's what's next for you? Another any any books around the corner? Pizza, hopefully, that's what's next for me. That, yeah, yeah. I know you got dinner. I know you got dinner right. with the that's wife. Right. Yeah, that's we right. don't want to keep. That's it. a good call. So, that's a good yeah. call. Happy, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> exactly. It's very yes. good. Exactly. No, what's next? I you know I I'll probably write something, but I don't know if I'll write about sports that much anymore. I mean, yeah. I think I've kind of said it all. If you don't get it by now, I don't know what else I could tell you to have you help you along. Do, do you have any inside information on the 49ers this year? That's what, uh, so, you know. Well, you know, Brock Purdy's a pretty good story. He's he, a very he is. Tom Brady-esque type of guy. Yeah. And now NFL people are kind of down on him around. a little bit, a little down because they've lost a couple. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it, will, he be the, will he be the comeback kid? Yeah. <clears throat> but it I mean, be I fixed. think I don't care. I just want to put another <laughs> another picture up behind me. Yeah. But I mean, in the end, like in the NFL, see who's the big stories i mean it's always it's like say i look at it more as stories what's the big sure. story the eagles we had right. the eagles last year right. the cowboys maybe but jerry jones has got some issues with the nfl because he doesn't share all the revenue like all the other owners do right right, right. And, and, and what else is there yeah i mean the 49ers are probably the best story i certainly think so but i'm a little biased <laughs> well there's big san francisco <laughs> logo back there but... yeah it's i know I, i'm a little i'm a little biased um, so you, so if you write another book, you don't think it'll be, uh, about sports. I, well, at least not the next one. No, no, no. I mean, I still, I still pay attention to it all. I still kind of keep an eye on sort of things, but after doing the fixes in and then the fix is still in, which is kind of like all the stuff that happened after the fix is in. Yeah. <laughs> and there's yeah. stuff, stuff right, still right. Show, showing the consistency. <laughs> of it. Yeah. It's almost got, you know, I got to probably wait another, like, you know, five, 10 years before to write, you know, the, I told you the fix was in, you know, <laughs> book. I mean, the, the finish the trilogy, I guess. I still know that the fix is in. Yeah, right? exactly. There you go. Well, Brian, listen, I, I, I know you got other things to get to and I appreciate you taking some time Thanks out so of your evening time, uh, to talk no with problem. us. This was a lot of fun. Um, uh, next week we'll talk to uh, an expert on the Easter bunny and Santa Claus. Uh, so we can just go ahead and blanket everything no i'm yeah. kidding no this was great information brian no really thank you for being on the show i appreciate it, it was short notice and i appreciate yeah, no you problem. coming on yeah no if you guys ever want me back there's there's plenty awesome. more to talk about too. absolutely yeah, absolutely we'll definitely have you me. definitely have you back on brian Tui, ladies and gentlemen of the dave and doc podcast thank you sir thank you and welcome back <laughs> i love it <laughs> That was great. It was my first time. That was great. No, so that that was awesome. Oh man, um, very much enjoyed um, getting to talk with Brian. Uh, super nice guy. Um, he he is obviously well read, and um, particularly liked the fact <laughs> that he ended up on an FBI watch list, dude. How about that? Freedom of Information Act request. I mean, how awesome is that? Um, uh, you know, you're dedicated when you get on an FBI watch. I mean, definitely, thing. definitely doing the research. And I think that's yeah. really cool. And, and I, and I like the fact too, you know, he, he definitely a, approached it. Not obviously uh, some of these things were, were bore out of the gambling side of things. You know, mm -hmm. he's definitely done a lot of research in terms of the, the revenue stream of things between yeah. obviously the different teams, their owners, the, the leagues themselves, and then, of course, the 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 networks that that actually show these programs um, for entertainment purposes, and so I I think that's pretty interesting. Um, <clears throat> just just that you know that 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 amount of information and and that narrative that that he's able to to present, and I mean you know definitely there's there's some some pretty compelling arguments in there about about all those things. Yeah, here's here's the thing though. He didn't tell me if the Niners are going to win the Super Bowl. We're going to have him back at the playoffs. Yeah, we'll have. I, we'll I really think. I really think you'll have to like reach back out to him. Yeah, we'll have and, Brian and, and 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 try to get him back on because I, you know, basically, what's the road to to achieve uh, another Super Bowl for for y'all? Yeah, especially when old Brock is uh, struggling a little bit. But perhaps, perhaps, perhaps that is part of the storyline because right now, what's catching fire? The Swifties and Travis Kelsey. Yeah, Mike McDaniel, Tyreek Hill, and the Dolphins. Yeah, you know what's going to happen with Mac Jones? Is Aaron Rodgers going to make it back? So there's these other things, and so you know the the Niners. If you remember last year, they you know they were like three and four or whatever, and yeah. they get CMC, and then boom, um, they didn't lose again until the uh, and they didn't <laughs> lose again to the NFC Championship. Right, right. Yeah. And if Brock Purdy hadn't gotten hurt, they would have won. And who knows? But that wasn't part of the deal because people were on the Eagles. 
Um, so we'll we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I don't want to wait. See. I don't want to wait. It's okay. I, I want it to be. I don't want to wait for the playoffs <laughs> to be over. We won't get our fifty cents because I'm using this song. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, you know what? We didn't. We didn't ask Brian if he had ever seen the game show. Guess that ass. <laughs> <laughs> we ran out of time. We ran out of time. He, he had to. He definitely. Um. He, yeah. He he was very gracious because I know. I know. Obviously, he he was he was wanting to spend some time with his wife. And, he and, told me earlier this that's, week. That's he's a, like, yeah, I need to know much, what time this is and everything because I'm trying to make dinner plays with my wife. Yeah. Like, that, that's it. a much. That's a much uh, more important thing. Yes. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. <laughs> but that was a great uh, great interview. I'm glad we got to talk to Brian and Absolutely. glad we got to bring that to you, good people. That's right. Thank y'all for watching. And, and we hope that you enjoyed the interview as much as we did. Yeah, and you won't see us on TikTok anymore. Not on the TikTok. I promise you that. No more TikTok. No. Nope. Nope. But where you it. can find us at is on the Dave and Doc website. That's that ain't a- going anywhere. A-N-D doc, D-O-C dot com. Dot com. 16, almost 17,000 subscribers, folks. Thank Let's you. push it to 3 million by we're, next week. We're going. Hit that button. <laughs> Sign it up. Thank you, Germany. Thank you, Canada. Thank you, the Far East. Thank you, the folks uh, out in California, Wisconsin, Oklahoma, Nebraska, right here in the great state of Tennessee. We appreciate you. I thought you were going to name them all. I was getting excited. Oh, yeah. Alabama, Alaska. We could sing it all day. It's probably a copyright violation anyway. Nah, it's okay. It'll be Thank fine. Thank y'all. We appreciate you very much. We'll see you soon. All right, folks. Have see a good bye. one. Bye. See you. Bye. <laughs>